good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So, guys, before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick confirmation if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well? Perfect. Thank you so much for the confirmation, everyone. So, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself to you all first. So, my name is Neeraj Kheria, and I have been working in this IT industry for more than 13 years now. So, let's get started. So today we have gathered for a discussion on how we can use Tableau for data science. So first of all, the main agenda for this entire session is going to be around Tableau platforms. So we are going to start with the discussion on what exactly is data visualization, why we have to use Tableau, what exactly it is, what is data science, and then we are going to work on solving the problem statements by using Tableau. So if you talk about data visualization, then we know that almost every industry vertical, they are having a good amount of data being generated and that too, on, not on a, we can say, at regular intervals, but on a, on a daily frequency, be it social media platforms, be it healthcare, aviation, banking sector, they all have been generating data and that too at an exponential manner. And when we have so much of data, then we have to make sure that in order to sustain, not just grow in the market, but even to sustain in the market, we have to make sure that we are using the data in the best way possible by getting inside, okay, what exactly has been our performance, where exactly we have been lacking, and again, what is the reason behind it, and why our computers, they are growing, or what exactly has been the trend in the market. We need to know that because, again, until and unless we know about these trends, we won't be able to improvise the operations uh, operations uh, marketing uh, development of products so each and every department whether we talk about r d or marketing operations every department depends upon these knowledge on this knowledge right that's why we will be able to outsmart our competitors and then and that's the main reason we will be staying ahead of our competition if we are able to analyze the data and then we are if we are able to study the pattern okay how exactly the use is going to be or how the market is going to change for good and that exactly is what is given to us by data science in making sure that we are having complete clarity on the market and how exactly we have to customize our plans accordingly so when we have tableau data set it's not easier to make sense of that tableau data and that's why visualization allows us to visually to create a visual report out of the current data set that we have the access to so that we can inform our stakeholders even they would be having a good time in understanding the entire data set and plus there we can have a good report generated on which the entire actions can be taken up and that exactly is what data visualization is converting the data in from tableau or any format into visualized report so that an action out of it can be taken up and then we can quickly derive the meaning we can simply find, we can quickly set up the trend and then we can find relations between multiple data pointers and then we can quickly take up actions on top of it. That exactly is what data visualization is all about. And then if you talk about, for example, now just by looking at this data set, so obviously when we are looking at this data set, it may look the same, correct? Because again, if there's not much difference that we can observe as a normal user when we are looking at these two tables, right? But when we plot these table in the graph, for example, when we try to simply visualize this on graph, then we can see the entire correlation for different data pointers are completely different, right? So that's why, again, we cannot say that first one is the same as the second one, the second one is same as the first one, and so on. They all have different variation, they all have different correlation with the given data set, and that exactly is what we derive by using data visualization techniques. So now why exactly we have to use Tableau platforms because Tableau is one of the leading BI tools available out in the market. Now when we say BI tools, that means tools allow, that allow us to work in business intelligence as in to derive the sense out of the different trends we are going to observe or we are all currently observing. So like we have tools like we have Power BI, Power BI offered by Microsoft. Again, then Tableau is also one of the main competitors for Power BI for a complete data analysis requirement and tableau is again tableau has multiple advantages that means it offers a better level of scripting it has 
the interactive visuals and it has a quick production time as compared to other developers and that's why it is preferred by majority of the bi developers all around the globe and to get started we also have a free version available by by tableau by the name of tableau public that we can get started with so either we can use the enterprise version or we can use a free tableau public to get started with our data analysis job as a part of tableau platform and then when you say it is flexible it means it is easily it can be easily connected with multiple data sources as and when required so tableau is what tableau is basically a software company which produces interactive data visualization products like we have tableau desktop on business intelligence and tableau helps the world's largest companies unleash the power of the most valuable assets their data and the people and it allows the customers to spend more time on data analysis and less time on data wrangling methods so by using tableau we can now we can use tableau to easily integrate analyze and visualize any data frame that we want we can easily do that all right so we have a version available called as tableau public we have version called as tableau public so we can download tableau public to get started so here we have to enter our credentials and then we have, will be able to get the download link through which we can get started. Now it is not available as a trial. It is completely free of course that we can use for the analysis part. All right. Once we have Dalvo public downloaded then we can open this up and this is how Dalvo public is going to look like that we are going to work on. All right. So if you talk about data science and data science in simple layman terms it's simply used for increasing the accuracy of the predictions so here we make use of data sets and then we apply our own scientific methods we apply our own statistical knowledge to play around with the numbers and find the most accurate prediction of what exactly is going to be in the market is what is going to happen in the market in that particular area of interest in in upcoming months or days and it involves programming statistics and the business use case requirement now it gives you knowledge so data science involves business requirements so we have to make sure that our entire work uh, uh, we can say aligns with the business goals so that we have a better understanding of what exactly we are required to do and then we have to work on data acquisition that it involves data processing maybe first of all before any every piece of data we know they all the entire data set is usually dirty dirty as in we have multiple garbage values we have inconsistencies in the entire data set so we have to work on pre-processing data set before we can get started and then we have to work on data exploration as in like we have the eda as an exploratory data analysis where we can analyze the entire data set and so try to find the answers to the common myths or common assumptions how if they stand true or not and then we have to create multiple models for data that we are going to use for the ml pass ml we can say machine learning purpose and then we have deployment that we do once we are done with creating the entire models then we can deploy them to any solution any, any solutions like we have azure ml studio and other platforms all right so data science as we know is a domain that we make use of in multiple industry verticals that we have media and entertainment we have we make use of healthcare we make use of data science in education in government sector in transportation sector in insurance retail and there are multiple domains almost every industry they are generating data set right and without a more accurate prediction in for, the, for what exactly is going to happen in future they will not be able to sustain for long in the market and that's why companies like google microsoft apple they have sustained for almost two decades right Amazon what is the reason behind that again they are using data extensively in understanding each and every pointer about the market and the users and how they have to continuously keep on improvising themselves and that to what what pointer and tell what extent that has been the main key pointer for success for them correct so the first problem statement that we are going to work on so we in the is it is January of 2016 and CEO of Superstore is looking to bolster business for the upcoming year the finance team has noticed that there were profit problems for some inventory categories during 2015. So we have been tasked with figuring out which item have had profit problems multiple years in a row, where the problems are happening and why. 
and we also need to visualize this data so that multiple teams leadership sales finance marketing and manufacturers can view the results and understand the data quickly so for that we have to make use of a visualization dashboard and that exactly is what we are going to do as a part of tableau so let's get started so first of all we have to go back to our tableau desktop platform now here once we get started first of all we have to choose the data source so for now before we discuss on data so we have multiple data source available so before we choose one we have excel we can derive data from excel from text file from any database that we can we can set the access to we can set the connection to any any database service and then we can derive data from there now currently we have some file, some sample files available that we are going to work with for example here we have two samples files for the which is, has been made available by tableau itself as a part of super store data set so there we are going to work on these two different sheets first of all we have the global super store orders that we are going to work with so now these files are available as an excel file so we are going to open these excel files in a tableau desktop and then we are going to get started so here let's say we open the excel file now here we have three sample files available with us so we are going to work with super store orders and then we are going to work with superstore returns as well so first of all we are going to work on importing the superstore orders and then we are going to import the superstore returns as well so let's do one thing let's import the superstore orders 2016 we can click on open and now this file is going to be opened up in the tableau public desktop now as you can see now currently the file has been loaded here now once we choose again depending upon the now if you want we can derive we can extract multiple tables here and then we can start extracting data from these multiple tables as well we can easily do that so what we are going to do we are going to work on two different tables we are going to work first of all on tableau total orders and then we are going to work on different data set like we have tableau orders for which have been returned like those orders which has been returned by the users by the user that is going that is what we are going to work on as a part of our analysis so here we can see here we have two different tables here here we have for people and the other one we have for orders so currently we can see that now we have we can see the list of the entire orders that we have the access to currently we have one table here containing the orders now here we have multiple row id here we have the order id available we have the order date the shop date the ship mode customer id customer name segment postal code city state country region market so these all different data pointers are available to us as a part of the analysis that we can perform and now we may have we may derive this data from now the same use case is going to be available when we are in our certification training as well so we will be given the access to these different data set and then we have to solve the problem statement that we are having so that so that we can derive meaning out of the current data set we can and if we have multiple tables that we want to join together for example we have another table which contains data for the orders which has been which, which have been returned by the end user so we can simply use this table we can use that table we can combine this we can perform join operations on that table to have a more meaningful insight on how data is structured and how we have to make sense out of it so if you want to work on another data set so here we can click on add and once we are clicking on add we can add another data source here so here we can click on add files here so let's say here we want to derive the files from excel so here we can choose excel as a source and let's say here we also open for orders return now here we can see the list of all the orders which has been returned by the end users so now if you want to now if you want to perform join operations on these different type uh, tables here so here for example here we have this table of our order returns right so here we can drag and drop it here and then we can perform the join operations as well for example here first of all we have to simply choose okay the matching columns that we want to use as a part of defining the relationship now we have multiple pointers that overlap here like we have a segment we have ship date we have the category and the exact date when it was returned by the end customers that we can focus on or if you want to work on just one particular analysis then we can work on that one analysis as well as part of the requirement 
Now, when we are defining the relationship, we can define what kind of relationship we want to define, what kind of relationship we want to have in these different use cases. Now, the second one is, we, is what we are going to work for with on our second use case. So here we are going to work on the first use case itself. So let's remove this relationship for now. So we can remove this for now. And now we have the orders. And now in the same orders, we have also combined people as well. So now, once we have this kind of our data set with us, now we are going to work on visualizing the current data set. So once we are done, we can move to sheet one so that we can start making sense out of the current data that we have visualized. So here, this is the home page for Tableau where we have all the dimensions and then we have all the matrices that we can work with, right? And this is a sheet where we are going to work on creating the visualization part. And here we have all the common visualization up available based on the data pointer that we are going to select here. That is what we are going to work with as a part of our session. Now, depending upon the data pointer that we can start visualizing accordingly. And our problem statement was to find which particular product is not performing really well. And that is something that we can easily define by fetching the data pointers that we want to visualize here. For example, here we have the order priority right so here we can choose the entire order priority from the given measure from the given table so for example here we order priority and here we can bring into tables so now here we can define whether we want to visualize this based on rows or we can define this as columns we can combine these two together now in this example we have defined the order priority in terms of rows correct in terms of row for example let's say here if we want we can remove this and so that we can add other other attributes so if you want to remove that when we want to visualize we can choose any of the of the data pointers here or once we don't want to, once we are done if you want to remove those those data pointers we can simply click on remove here from the section all right so now let's suppose here we want to visualize okay what has been the profit among different categories and that too among different years as well right now here we have the profit that has been visible here as a part of measure. So here we can bring profit and we can place it in the row section. So here we can see the total profit which has been recorded as per the current data set that we are currently looking at. Now we have to uh, as per our problem statement. We have to visualize which product has not been giving us a good prop, uh, profit in the given years. That exactly is our problem statement. Correct. So here we have to make sure that okay, we are going to define the properties as a part of the color segment as well correct and now we have to visualize the entire property based on different parameters correct so for that so for example here we want to make sure we are also giving the properties to to color schemes then here we can define color schemes and here we can see the actual profit visible that we can plot against any other colors as well and if we are going to to customize the entire color scheme as well then here we can simply customize what kind of color we want to customize this for that we are going to look at and now basically here we can define profit and now if you want to define this for us for different rates and we can also do that one thing let's remove this for now here we can define profit in the rows and now we can if not if you are looking to visualize this based on the data pointers here for example here we want to visualize based on the different data pointers on which we have been on where exactly we have or or in which year we have received the most amount of profit we want to visualize that so first of all we have to define the, prof the profit in rows and then we can choose the year section that means here in year the, we have order date so here we can simply put order date and drive this in the column section here so currently we can see the entire data set based on on different years and if you want to expand this in here, we can click on this one. And we can see the different profit ratio has been defined. But well, that means what has been profit in 2012, 2013, 14, and 15. So you can see the actual data set being deployed here. And now if you want to use year pointer based on a color tip, then here we can simply bring this color tip, this year section into the color tip. Now we can see the same visualization has been uh, has been deployed as a part of the year section so now here we have all the years and here we can see a single report now if we want to now currently we are seeing the entire report based on the quarter correct 
now we want to expand this not to quarter we want to see month by support then here we can define month by support so if you go to month then here we can see the entire month by support has been generated correct and now if you want to segregate this further again we can click on plus and we can see the same report is now being segregated on a month wise basis and that too for different year that we can visualize all right so here we can define okay how exactly we are going to create the reports and here we can define okay how exactly we are going to segregate them as well based on on a monthly basis based on the now here we want to have on a monthly basis or on a day wise basis or on a quarter basis and here we can visualize it as per the setup defined or as per the setup required right and if we hover over any of the pointers that we can see now here we can see the entire month of the day we can see here the year of date and here we can simply visualize the entire profit and that too for different years as for the graph that we have currently defined so here we have the order date here we have the entire sum of profit being divided in different years and if we see this now here we can see the entire legends as in the green one is for 2015 the red one is for 2014 the orange one is, in, is for 2013 and then blue one is for 2012 as a part of segregated data set and now for example let's say here we want to visualize this based on sales growth for example on year to year growth right so again we can choose profit again we can bring the profit the same ratio and here we can click on it and here we have the entire quick table calculation so now here we want to visit to plot this based on year to year growth right now here we can see currently we have the difference of in profit in different years for different well, you can say for different years so here we can visualize that in july suppose in july 2013 there was a big difference there's a there was a difference of 250 percent in terms of the profit right whereas again as in year to year growth and this has a performance for each and every year based on a simple profit ratio okay right? so here we have the actual profit distribution and here we have simply calculated the difference in profit ratio as a given percentage and I suppose here we want to make sure that this entire this sum is defined as a tooltip. So here we can drag this and tooltip, and here we can have the entire difference in profit. Or if you want, okay, this one should stay here, and the profit sum should be defined as tooltip. And here we can have the entire tooltip defined. That means tooltip means if you all can notice that once we hover over any data pointers here, now we can see the difference in profit also being available as a hover, as a tooltip. So what we have done, we have simply instead of plotting this now, if we want to to add any data here as a part of tooltip, then we can simply drag and define this on tooltip as well. Next, we have categories. Now we have to find out the answer to the question where okay, which category of products have been not we can see not performing well. So what we have to do, we have we have the section for categories available in the left sidebar. So here we have the city, the category of products. So what we can do. To see the performance of categories, we can drag categories and for example, here we can place them in the row section. So now we can see for furniture, what has been the year wise year's performance? What has been the performance for office supplies? What has been, uh, the performance for technology as well? Because these three are the three categories of product that we have, right? So we can see the difference in the performance for these different products one by one, correct? So that we have now we are having a better picture clarity on how different product has been defined now if you want to save this suppose let's say here we can rename this, this sheet here now we can define this as profit seasonality so we can see okay how profit has been distributed across year by year and that to how it has been distributed at what time of the year we can see the entire seasonality and then we can save this sheet so that we can once we are done we can create a report here and we can know okay what exactly we have been working on this sheet and if you want to create a new report then we can create a new sheet out of it and then we can resume accordingly all right so that's what we can define for again for season by, by for season by season seasonality we can define the entire ratio here and then same way for example suppose if you want to customize the entire look and feel for any specific category for example here we want to change the currency if you want to go for a different currency distribution we want to visualize them separately then we can change the entire look and feel for the entire parameter accordingly for example here we have profit right so here we can uh, here we can click on profit 
and if you want to change the number here then here we can go to the entire default properties and number format so here we can choose what kind of number for one we want to use as in currency right currently we are swimming so we currently we are showcasing only currency in this format and again if we are going to do display any unit here we can define it or we can add the suffix and prefix accordingly depending upon what kind of policy or what kind of uh, currency we are going to visualize the current data set in now this entire view gives us a better idea of how they have been structured together and then how we have to make and, and again how they have been profitable so that we can now present this report to the entire team to, to give them a quick glimpse okay how exactly they have been performing now then we can define the entire performance based on state wise performance as well correct so what we can do here we can define state wise performance so for that we can create a new sheet we can create a new sheet where we can choose data pointers for different state wise performance as well because of why we can plot this on graph because again we do have the geospatial data available with us right we do have the access to perform geospatial analysis so we can create a new sheet and here we have data for state so let's plot this on state itself so here we have our state so let's do one thing let's simply drag and drop in the state value here and once you drag it in the sheet now we can see different perform now different states where the wherever the sale has been achieved this is going to be visualized now if you want to use a different map for visualization then here we can explore more like show me and here we can use this map for plotting this in terms of the area altogether in terms of area so currently we had to visualize this based on the current data set altogether correct now we want to make sure that we are we are simply segregating it based on the profit right so for example here we can define profit and here we can add as a data pointer here, as a part of color pointers here now we can see now we can see different color pointers have been added based on the profit given so if you even if we visualize on different patterns here we can see how the profit has been distributed based on this color scheme defined based on this color scheme that we have currently defined here and if you want to make changes to the color scheme here suppose here we want here we want to customize this further we can click on the color scheme edit colors now these are predefined color scheme that we can pick from for example here we are automatic we want to use the orange blue again this one here so we can simply click on change here and same change is going to be applicable for any color scheme or for any report that we are going to generate accordingly so here we can pick any color scheme as per the requirement we can choose green diversity here we can choose any other color scheme for example let's say if you want to change this again let's even to change this for blue green brush so here we can click on apply and now the entire color scheme has been changed which now depending upon where and how exactly we want to define it we can define it as per the requirement and now we also want to visualize this based on the sales as so again we can simply define sales and we can define as a color property so now we are seeing the performance on sales and the entire property issue that has been defined as per the current analysis that we have currently been doing for example now we have earlier we had profit right so here we can define profit to color and now we can define sales at the size if we are going to plot multiple graphs here so here we can define sales as size and then we can define state as a detail session as well so for example here we for state we have defined as state as label and then for different categories we can define it as label as well so that this can be easily help in visualizing the entire current data set here so for example we want to define categories okay which has been the most popular we can say most on demand category then here we can simply drag category and put them under label so now we can see the performance of different category has been currently plotted on top of this data set altogether all right so basically to add categories here we can simply remove the categories and uh, now the category wise distribution we have added as a part of the label sets for example we want to add labels here then we can see which main category has been again what has been distribution for one specific category that we are going to focus on for example suppose here we want to filter out this applies only for furnitures and here we can choose furnitures and we can see the entire distribution of only furnitures in different states if you want to visualize the entire we can say entire data pointers not for just furnitures but again we want to show them based on the suppose office supplies or based on technology then we can simply 
define these parameters as a filter we can do that so that is how we can visualize different data pointers here when we are working with different bomb statement as a part of the discussion on tableau let's use another sheet for example let's say here we want to visualize the category and the profit for it now we can choose any of the based on the based on the given data set tableau automatically suggests us what kind of data pointers would be the best one for us for example here we have a pie chart we can use a pie chart we can use a heat map we can use the entire bar graphs we can use any we can use bar graphs we can use heat mass we can use the box plot we can use a scatter plot box here depending upon what kind of visualization method is going to be the best option for us to go ahead with right so depending upon that we can simply visualize the current we can use the current data set and then we can start plotting them accordingly all right so for example suppose here we have this graph here we can choose this particular plot here correct and same way for example let's say here we also want to throw in the complete segment as well so here we can also add segment suppose here we apart from categories here we also want to further segregate them based on segment here so here we can define segment so now we can we can change the entire segment and then we can simply visualize how exactly we are going to segregate them and again we want to simply segregate them based on the order date as well so here we can choose order date and suppose here we want to showcase an order date based on the different color schemes here so here we can define order order date based on on the scheme and here we can simply define now here we can choose let's say we choose the year wise in terms of segment and here we define segment as different colors so currently we can see here we have different segments that we have visualized and then we can segregate them based on different year wise performance as well that is what has been the performance of different segments accordingly and again if we want to have different methods defined here then we can also plot them based on different graph methods we can also plot them on different segments as per the requirement all right we have the same tele platform you know basically here we can use the entire dashboard or first of all if we want to create a new dashboard out of the current data set here we can click on new dashboard and there we can define the entire dashboard how many sheets we are to create here we have to, now here we can define the entire device preview as well because at the end if we want to give the access to the same dashboard to multiple teams then here we can define the entire dashboard okay how exactly we have to customize it for example here we have to customize it to fit all or fit width or we have to define a fixed width depending upon the parameters then we can define the width accordingly depending upon how exactly we want to place them one by one all right once we are done now here in terms of layout we can define the entire layout as well that means again how exactly we want to customize the entire layout if you want to have a custom layout defined here here we can choose custom and then we can define okay we want to have a horizontal layout defined here we want to have a blank one or how exactly we have to define the entire navigation then we can define the entire navigation we can ask for the requirement we can choose any of the navigation method as and when required thank you so much for being a part of the session guys and have a great day ahead take care bye bye